Well, obviously, in this segment, we are going to get into parabolas. Now, before we begin, we have to understand what is a parabola and what is not a parabola. A parabola, in radio anyway, is defined as an arc or a curve that reflection will come to a common focal point. So with this dish, if you've paid attention to the series, you'll clearly understand that radio waves will reflect off of metal surfaces. So here we have a very common to find 14 inch satellite TV dish. You can get these off of Craigslist practically around the world for free. Uh, you can find them in the garbage or if you hate your neighbors, just rip it off the side of their house. I have a stockpile in my lab. We'll get into that later. Now, because metal reflects radio waves, and that is the fundamental reason why parabolas give us gain. The radio waves are going to hit the parabola, and because of this actual arc, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to reflect off to a common point right here to this device right here. This device is called the LNB, or the Low Noise Block. This device does not receive Wi-Fi. Its only function is to serve for measurement reasons so we know where the focal point is. Now, if you did procure a satellite dish and you do not have an LNB, it really does not matter. Most of the time, for most small-scale satellite dishes, this would be a small dish, believe it or not, uh, it is typically 5 inches up, 4 inches in, at a 60-degree angle. That is the common for most 14 to 18-inch satellite dishes. Now, um, we'll get into different types of satellite dishes as we go through the segment and their benefits and their drawbacks, but before we even begin this, I want to get into something, okay? A lot of people have been scouring their kitchen and following really, really weak instructions on the internet on how to put together homemade parabolas, and to tell you the truth, you morons will believe anything anyone fucking tells you. And you should do your own research before you actually build anything. If you've been paying attention to the series, you have a clear understanding that you need the proper coax, you need the proper connectors, you need the proper cards, and you need the proper materials. Now, some people have been using these little strainers as parabolic reflectors and they'll go and take a USB Wi-Fi card and you know you might get a couple of gain a couple of decibels gain you know what it's really not a true par parabola don't bother don't waste your fucking time fuck it okay uh, some people have used walks or other forms of kitchen pans you know what these are not parabolas if you've gone and tried this and failed now you know why there is no focal point it's just a reflector this will probably do more harm than good to your radio signals don't use pots, pans, and other things. Use a true parabola. Okay? I've seen people go as far as using actual umbrellas themselves, lined with metal foil on the inside, as parabolas. Listen, jackass, this is not a parabola. For being cheap, a stingy bitch, get a freaking satellite dish. Okay? No one ever said that this is going to be cheap. No one ever said that this is going to be easy. But hopefully by... by Going through this segment, you've learned a couple of things about Wi-Fi in itself. So maybe you are a cheap, stingy son of a bitch who didn't want to pay more than $8 for a crappy Wi-Fi card that has no compatibility across any operating system whatsoever, and chances being it won't even work with NetStumbler, which is, for the next segment, why your cards aren't working with NetStumbler. But anyway, so you got this crap $8 card, and that's all you really want to spend for it. You know what? Here is an actual parabola. It's the Windsurfer printable template. Okay? I'll put a link to it. It's you know what? It works. Why does it work? Because it's a real parabola. What you do is you literally print out this template and you put it on some kind of material. Typically, an old cereal box will work just fine. There's a, rec uh, a rectangle here that you actually line with metal foil that becomes your parabola and the, the circle area will actually fold your, your actual flat into a parabola. I decided to put mine on some plastic because it's a little bit more sturdy than cereal box cardboard. You can literally make this out of a cereal box and tin foil, and you will get close to 8 decibels of gain. And when you're done, it will look something like this. Uh, you'll have a metal reflective on one side, the side does not matter, and you just stick your little rubber duck through your USB Wi-Fi adapter. This does actually work, I have them on my home routers. The problem with this is they're flimsy and they, they're destroyed really easily. But, you know, not too many people can actually fit a 14 to 18 inch satellite dish in their luggage when they go on vacation. I know I bring one, Mustang will bring one, and I know Uggster does, but not everyone will, are willing to go and tie their siblings and their, and their significant bothers to the roof in sacrifice to bring a satellite dish with them. So, this is the basis of a parabola. Now, the easiest thing, if you are a cheap, stingy son of a bitch who doesn't want to spend more than $8 for any of your stuff, you got your hands on a parabola. Hopefully you've either ripped it off the side of your neighbor's house because you don't like them or someone gave it to you or found it. I don't care how you got it, you got it. Uh, you 
got either an original LMB or you have to recreate some kind of some kind of structure to stick your card onto. Wood would be the best idea because you can cut it easily with a saw and it's non-metallic. It won't absorb or, or really affect the radio waves. You take your card and you affix it right to the focal point. That's the easiest thing you can do to get a relatively decent gain uh, uh, antenna without doing any kind of soldering or any kind of modding. Granted, if you're going to use a USB card, USB cables shouldn't really be run more than 25 feet without a repeater. That's here nor there. Figure that out the hard way. Now, the thing about these parabolas is people think that the radio waves come straight on over here. That's actually completely false. Typically, they need to be um, tilted down about 60 degrees. So the LMB and, and, and the actual arm itself will be practically facing as such. And the radio waves will actually come from here and reflect. So a lot of people will just put the dishes pointing straight, figuring that the radio waves have to come from directly on and reflect back. That's not true. This actually has a very wide, what's called a beam width, or how wide it can actually see. So, um, uh, you have to adjust, adjust the actual uh, dish depending on what type of dish it is. Now, I've got NetStumbler going, I've got um, my little Pentena that I made in the first Wi-Fi antenna segment, because unfortunately, like I said, all of my USB cards have been either destroyed or otherwise modified in episode, I believe, 19. So uh, this is pretty much the closest thing to any kind of dipole we're going to get or anything stock. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this. We're going to get Nets Tumbler and we're going to use the dish and we're going to see if we can tune into a couple of access points in the neighborhood. All right, you know what? Before we actually start playing with the dish, uh, let's go and we'll take the uh, little pentana that I made in the first dipole segment. We got Nets Tumbler going. We're picking up about 12 access points. Some of them pretty piss poor because we're in a completely enclosed brick home right now. And we're going to go and take the the windsurfer and just try to gently put this together because you got to remember this thing is pretty fragile and we're going to actually go ahead and take a look at an SSID that it is actually in an apartment building right behind me is a brick wall that it, that's metal lined with metal mesh and behind that is a metal fence and behind that metal fence about 25 feet away is an apartment building and that apartment building has this current access point about five floors up so, you could imagine how hard it would be for this, uh, this little pentana to get any kind of signal. And just by reflecting around, if you notice I'm angling it up at the actual apartment building, we can try to figure out what kind of gain it's getting. And as, as, as the, web, the, the, wave, the Windsurfer website actually claims, you get about you know, anywhere from 5 to 8, and if you're lucky, you know, 10 to 12 decibels of gain. That's almost as good as a bi-quad. But unfortunately, it's a little flimsy design. It's, it's not going to really weather too well. And it, it, just to show you that even when you point it away, the signal just bombs out completely. Now, something I have noticed with NetStumbler, which I'll get into the ne uh, next episode, um, sometimes NetStumbler does not report your signal strengths accurately. We'll get that into that next episode. But anyway, here's our little dish. You know, we'll go and tune into my actual access point, MCP. And we'll try to point this in the general direction and where it's coming from. But unfortunately, I've got a lot of noise as well as many, many other uh, access points that I have to chew through to get to it. But for the most part, this is the windsurfer. So you know what? Uh, we'll go back to this uh, access point up here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. And here's our LMB from the satellite dish. I'm going to take the pentana, and i got some tape, just regular household packing tape, nothing special. Just tape it on, give the dish a nice old reach around that locking screw back in place and we're going to try to take this dish and we're going to see if we can focus. Now right now we're pulling pretty much no signal. Nets Dumbler says that we're pulling uh, probably about 85 decibel loss here but I'm pretty sure that it's just completely flat lined. If you notice Nets Dumbler is just completely flat out. So this dish is going to make a lot of noise as well. I adjust it unfortunately. And we'll see if we can figure out the actual focal point. Where are you? There we go. And we'll slowly adjust this just a little bit at a time. See if we can figure out where this... Well, actually, I know where it's coming from. It's coming from about five floors up. And there we go. That's the kind of gain that I'm looking at. Um, I've gotten close to about 65 decibel loss on this compared to a stock rubber duck which would be close to about 95 decibel loss. 
So even just one of these uh, small 14-inch satellite dishes can give you close to 20 decibels of gain. And what did we do to get this kind of gain? We just taped the card to the LNB, right to the focal point. And uh, this has got to be the absolute cheapest way uh, to get any kind of decent gain out of uh, a low-cost Wi-Fi solution. But you know what? We've made a couple of really nice high-gain antennas on the show. We've made the uh, the Bluetooth Waveguide, which will support us anywhere from uh, anywhere from 5 to 12 decibels of gain, depending on how you design it. And we've also got the Biquad, my favorite of all antennas, which has sport close to 12 decibel, decibels of gain, but on average 8, 9, 10. Um, so I'm going to go and hook this up to the, where the LMB is supposed to go, and we'll see what kind of gain we can get out of this one. All right, I've got the bi-quad attached. Um, I just quite literally used 90-degree angle mounting brackets. Now, I did have to bend a couple of them using a pair of pliers. 